Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer. Sorry this is getting out so late. I had uh, doctor appointments and meetings today and the day just got away from me. But I didn't want to not uh, record evening prayer, even if it's uh, later into the night. So my apologies, but uh, today was just a crazy busy day. Uh, had to go get a CAT scan uh, at the hospital today and um, just looking at things making sure you know that I'm staying as well as I can for an old guy and uh, I thank you I know you guys pray for me all the time and I really do appreciate it and I can tell yeah I can tell you guys are praying for me it's just uh, uh, it's the fact that I'm still upright and and, and able to do what I can do. It's uh, evidence that a lot of prayers, but so thank you. So today is uh, Monday, the 21st week in Ordinary Time, and our readings today, our first reading and our second reading are so different, and that's putting it mildly. I don't know if they could get any more different than they are today. Uh, the second letter, letter that Paul writes to the Thessalonians, the opening of that letter, is our first reading today. And he is just bubbling over glowing terms and accolades and congratulatory, uh, you know, he's just, just a big pat on the back to the people of uh, Thessal Thessaloniki. As what it's that's what it's called today in Greece. Had the privilege of being there in January. My goodness, uh, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful ancient Greece. You know, it's uh, it's 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 it, that's in the northern part of Greece, uh, um, north eastern part of Greece, and uh, we were up there along with Philippi, uh, Thessal Thessaloniki, and Philippi. Uh, two ancient cities in northern Greece. And uh, so anyway, the people of, of the, the Thessalonians, uh, according to Paul in this uh, letter, been doing a bang-up job and putting up with persecutions and all the hardships that that are always endured by the early Christians. And anyway, the, the letter is just a, a big thanks to them for... Uh, fighting the good fight and doing the good work and and uh, he's just saying you know just keep up keep up the good work it's you're doing great guys and so <laughs> just a a glowing uh, first reading and then the gospel the gospel Jesus talking to a large crowd uh, the people the the people gathered around and his disciples and he's got nothing but warnings. Woe to you, and woe to you, and oh yeah, woe to you too. Uh, he's he's uh, looking at the Pharisees, the chief priests, the scribes, and he's just laying it on them. You know, they're being taken to the woodshed. Uh, Jesus isn't pulling any punches, calling them hypocrites and and uh, blind guides and just on and on about how terrible they've they've forgotten the mercy you know they're all caught up in the their rituals and their uh, man-made regulations that they've come up with and they lay heavy burdens on people but they've totally abandoned being good to the people that they're supposed to be ministering to. They've totally lost the love of God. And as I was saying this morning, which seemed like 10 days ago now, at Mass, the homily this morning, um, I think today it's a good day for looking in the mirror. You know, just looking looking in the mirror, clearing maybe some of the fog off the mirror so we can see very clearly. Hey, buddy. 
and maybe take an inventory. Where's where's my heart? Where's my life? Would Jesus call me hypocrite? Would he call me a blind guide? Would he have chastisement for the way I'm conducting my life? And so today, you know, it's it's time to reflect on where we are, where our hearts are, where our lives are. What kind of a of an influence am I on other people? You know, what what kind of uh, life am I living? Am I have I forgotten love and mercy? Am I so caught up in ritual and and liturgy and you know what? There's nothing wrong with those things, but if if that's what you're living for, you know, and you've forgotten the hearts and the people that are in front of you, and you're caught up in self-centered interests or looking good, you know, you're lost. I'm lost if that's the case for me. You know, it just... We have to really take stock. So today, today's the day to, to put your face in front of a mirror and honestly evaluate your life. Are you going to hear words like Paul is sending to the people of Thessaloniki? Or are you going to hear the Lord say, you hypocrite, you blind guide, you, <sighs> you know, I hope I never hear words like that from our Lord. I would, that would sting, that would really sting. And uh, I pray that none of us hear those kind of words. So let's pray our evening prayer this, this late evening and take stock of our lives and evaluate how I'm doing. How do I measure up in God's eyes? How do I measure up in the people that I'm supposed to be tending to and serving? You know, am I am I being a good shepherd? Or am I just some blowhard? You know? Am I living? You know, basically, you know, we have to make our yes mean yes and our no mean no and and be honest and forthright in everything we say and do when we can do that then we might be in line with the um like with the Thessalonica people and find that we're in good graces but could be the other way around too could be it could be just, you know, bad news. So, here we are. Evening prayer. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance, Lord. Make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord looks tenderly on those who are poor. In the Lord I have taken my refuge. How can you say to my soul, fly like a bird to its mountain? See the wicked bracing their bow, they are fixing their arrows on the string to shoot upright men in the dark. Foundations once destroyed, what can the just do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord whose throne is in heaven. His eyes look down on the world, his gaze tests mortal men. The Lord tests the just and the wicked, the lover of violence he hates. He sends fire and brimstone on the wicked, he sends a scorching wind as their lot. The Lord is just and loves justice. The upright shall see his face. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord God, you search the hearts of all, both the good and the wicked. May those who are in danger for love of you find security in you now, and in the day of judgment may they rejoice in seeing you face to face. The Lord looks tenderly on those who are poor. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Lord, who shall be admitted to your tent and dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault, he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. He who does not slander with his tongue, he who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors those who fear the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Make our lives blameless, Lord. Help us to do what is right and to speak what is true, that we may dwell in your tent and find rest on your holy mountain. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. God chose us in his Son to be his adopted children. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God shows us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time to bring all things into one in him, the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God shows us in his Son to be his adopted children. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. May you attain full knowledge of God's will, through perfect wisdom and spiritual insight. Then you will lead a life worthy of the Lord and pleasing to him in every way. You will multiply good works of every sort and grow in the knowledge of God. By the might of his glory, you will be endowed with the strength needed to stand fast, even to endure joyfully whatever may come. Lord, you alone can heal me, for I have grieved you by my sins. Lord, you alone can heal me, for I have grieved you by my sins. Once more I say, Lord, have mercy on me, for I have grieved you by my sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you alone can heal me, for I have grieved you by my sins. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their throne and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich.
he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. God has made an everlasting covenant with his people, and he never ceases to bless them. Grateful for these gifts, we confidently direct our prayer to him. Lord, bless your people. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Lord, bless your people. Gather into one body all who bear the name of Christian, that the world may believe in Christ, whom you have sent. Lord, bless your people. Give our friends and our loved ones a share in divine life. Let them be symbols of Christ before men. Lord, bless your people. Show your love to those who are suffering. Open their eyes to the vision of your revelation. Lord, bless your people. Be compassionate to those who have died. Welcome them into the company of the faithful departed. Lord, bless your people. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, May this evening pledge of our service to you bring you, you glory and praise. For our salvation, you looked with favor on the lowliness of the Virgin Mary. Lead us to the fullness of the salvation you have prepared for us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, I apologize for the lateness of the hour. Just one of those days. Let's pray that tomorrow isn't one of those days. And uh, we'll try to do better on Tuesday, okay? God bless.